Ladies and gentlemen, I have on the line from Gloucestershire in the UK a chap who who I've had as a bit of a hero for years uh, by the name of Dick Shepherd. Dick, how are you? I'm okay, yeah. yeah. I, I've got to ask you, first of all, about your experiences before you started the, the stunt team. Because, I mean, this is what I want to talk to you about, is, is the stunt team. But you, you did Wall of Death and all sorts of things, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I've done everything you can possibly think of to do on and off a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> when you started the Disaster Squad, I've got, I've got to tell people a little bit because... It was at the time in the 60s, I guess, when there wasn't an awful lot of health and safety about. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you were one of the few, and one of the best as far as I know, travelling stunt shows. How did you actually get into that? Oh, it was um, quite a long story, really. My father thought I ought to go into the aircraft industry because he thought the aircraft were a thing of the future. He'd be most upset to see all the jumbo jets being yeah, mothballed at Kemble. But anyway, the problem was with the Gloucester Aircraft Company, which is where I went, uh, they only made four, four aircraft. I started off with the Gloucester Gladiator, the Whistle invented the jet engine, they built the Meteor, followed by the Javelin. But the trouble is, the war had ended, and there wasn't that much of a market for <laughs> four planes anymore. Yep. So um, I, was made, I was made redundant. So I had to think of something else to do. My hobby at the time was a motorcycle stunt show. And so that's why I went into that direction. The Disaster Squad, as, as I say, I've seen them quite a few times. In fact, I've actually been in the ring taking photographs of you guys. And you were absolutely amazing. I mean, you turned up at, for instance, Stroud. And you built the ring and everybody was just stood around watching some of those amazing stunts. Did, was it always something that you were going to do, was to do the big stunt show like that? Well, not in particular, no. The um, reason I started is because I had a motorcycle display team for the motorcyclones. And uh, on a Saturday that I was not working, I said to my agent, what other stunt shows are there performing this weekend? And where are they? So I go along and watch. The main reason was to see what the public liked. And they loved uh, a motorcycle going through fire. And they loved a motorcycle going through a sheet of plate glass. <laughs> so that's why I introduced those two items into the mind. And I uh, actually ripped motorbike through over 300 sheets of plate glass. And of course, the trick is that the, the front wheel of the motorcycle is what actually smashes the glass. And all you do as a rider is to catch up with splinters of glass in the air. <laughs> so there we are. And the captain of the show one day said to me, Oh, Dick, he said, after you've done your uh, plate glass window smash, can you ride round and acknowledge the crowd twice? So I said, Oh, that's a bit hammy. <laughs> they go through fire and go round once and wave. He said, No, go round twice. I said, Why is that? And he said, Because the blood doesn't keep the show after the first circuit. <laughs> so that, oh, that's terrible. So that, <laughs> well, it is indeed, yeah, I suppose, yes. Nope. The origin of the word disaster squad is interesting also, I think, in as much as uh, we were traveling past a building site one day and there was a ready-mixed concrete lorry gone down in the trench. It was on its side, six tons of concrete in its in his, in his pack, and then um, the very next vehicle coming along the road was the world's biggest ex-American army breakdown truck, you can imagine. God. And on the headboard of it, it said, the disaster spot. <laughs> and, I thought, and I thought, oh boy, that's the name. Well, that's where the name disaster spot came from, off the ready mix uh, company breakdown truck. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. The the one stunt I always remember because you nearly ran me over once, but that's that's we're not. I'm not holding that against you. Was the tunnel of fire? Correct me. I, I may be wrong now, but you held the world record, didn't you, for the longest tunnel of fire? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, my name is in the Guinness Book of Records. Um, not only more often than any other person's name. 
even the editor, because he <laughs> resigned partway through my spell. Uh, but not only was I the uh, most occurring name in the Guinness Book of Records, it was also for the longest period, 1958-1969. Wow. That was an awesome stunt. I mean, th- there were some cre- very, very incredible stunts on the bikes and on the cars. You know, the cars on two wheels. Um, the, the chariot race was another one which I always thought was brilliant. <laughs> How yeah, the- quite ridiculous. <laughs> quite, ri- quite ridiculous, really, because um, uh, 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 they used to tow a board or something behind the car with a man standing on it, balancing, and we called that the chariot race. <laughs> and we had we had two guys do it, or four guys doing that, and we did it over ramps as well, so they had to jump over the ramps in, the, in exactly the same way as a chariot does. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And then there were the, the car stunts that really sort of did the show, the T-bone, and uh, the, the one where you shoved it out the roof of a furniture van, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. Those were just so exciting. Yes, yeah, that- that furniture van was quite a problem, really, in as much as my posters at the time used to advertise the fact that I'd go through a tunnel of fire and I would ride through a furniture van. And so, consequently, every time I did a show, I had to find a furniture van from somewhere, <laughs> and I always managed to find one. It was usually the tire store, the car breaker's yard, and I had to clear all the, clear all the tires out, and then tow the truck to the site, and then drive through it. So that was interesting. Um, but in actual fact, of course, um, it's quite an easy thing to do because of the front end of a furniture van is quite fragile, really, and it's a very easy thing to smash through. <laughs> I don't know. I'll take your word for it. But the T-bone, that was the one that always I always used to stand and think, that's his ribs broken. Because, I mean, that, that was a horrendous thing to do. Well, the, th- the thing is about a T-bone dive is that the, um, uh, when you go up the ramp and speed through the air and you crash, momentarily, the first thing that hits the ground, of course, is the front bumper, and momentarily, that is quite stationary. And so it's, uh, you're 60 miles an hour to a sudden stop, bank crash wallop, and oh dear, it's um, quite an experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, I know that you then went on to do Stuntorama, but before that, you got involved in TV and movies, um, doing helping people with their stunts, including people like Michael Caine in the Italian job. That that must have been a really, really exciting time. Uh, yes, it certainly was, the, um, uh, the, the Italian job. Um, quite interesting as much as the car going through the uh, sewer. Um, they wanted me to... So I drive the car up the sewer and turn over inside the sewer. Yes, so I yes. Said, that's not that, that's not possible because as soon as your wheels leave the uh, it, uh, it, it leaves the circle, so it, the car crashes onto its side. And so the way we fiddled that was we got them to build a, a tunnel, a tube, and the tube was uh, thirty-five feet long, and it was the same diameter as a sewer. And so the actual stunt was achieved by driving the car slowly up the base of this tunnel, and two men were turning the tunnel while I did it. So that's how that was achieved. (laughs) Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And he also did um, a little bit helping James Bond in Thunderball and Diamonds Are Forever. Um, That's right, yes. Um, Thunderball was um, a a Lincoln Zephyr, which was... um, well and truly armoured, but um, uh, just a, a, when I crashed that one, I decided to do two things. One was to take the sunshine roof off and put a sheet of brown paper over it and paint it black and take the <laughs> offside door off and put a sheet of paper across there and paint it black. So I had two chances of survival. <laughs> it landed on its roof, I got out the side, and if it landed on its side, I got out of the roof. These things are just... I mean, when you think about it, they're insane, really. You you wouldn't be able to get away with doing it nowadays, would you? Absolutely. Health and safety, no. It's, um, I'm a dinosaur at the end of my, <laughs> end of my lifespan. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the thing is that um, I always, I'm a little bit of a claustrophobic, actually, in as much I don't like 
enclosed spaces. So that's how I managed to escape and beat my way <laughs> out of all these cars I crashed. <laughs> when I was a teenage, when I was a teenager, all the people used to say to me, uh, especially my relations, if you don't calm down, you won't live to 30. And so um, I didn't calm down. Since then, I've wrecked over 2,000 cars. I survived three marriages. I survived the spell of lymphoma cancer. And I did reach 30. I did reach 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 and, and 90. And in May, this would be my 91st birthday. Well it done, sir. Survive. Well done, sir. Total respect for you. One thing I would like to ask you about, and, th- and that was a stunt which I, I, once again, I was there when it was done, and it was an absolutely amazing thing, and that was the jump that you worked with Jackie de Creon in um, stunt, right, yeah. Stuntorama yeah, at yeah. San Sapard. I, I was actually there doing That's photographs. Right. That was the most amazing stunt, and that was, a, once again, a world record, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it still is, apparently. Yes, nobody's ever beaten it. So it's still a world record. Two, 210 feet in one inch. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. And and that was, you prepared the car, I think, for that um, actual jump, didn't you? Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. It was a, a 1967 Mustang. And that's a hell of a car. To, <laughs> I mean, you must have had to do an awful lot of work to get it, I mean, to fly for over 200 feet to, to actually... Um, Yes, it just, it just so happened that everything was right on that particular day, in as much as when you drive a car into a ramp, as soon as you hit the ramp, you change the direction, and that slows you right down. And of course, the secret of crashing successfully is not to slow down, but to crash as fast as you can. So you roll over several times, and you come to a halt over the greatest distance, and that's how you survive. But also that day, the wind was right direction, the angle of the ramp was right, and so that's why that's how you managed to create a world record. I've got to ask you one question. You've done these amazing yes, stunts. Yes. You've driven and you've ridden some incredible machines to do some, frankly, bonkers things. Is there anything you wish you'd done? You know, like jump the Grand Canyon or something like that, or done the buses or something? Because, I mean, all these things have come um, afterwards. Yes, no, not really. I, 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 there's, there's nothing else I um, would like to do. I don't want to go wind walking. I don't want to do a bungee jump because they both sound pretty dangerous to me. <laughs> I don't know. I reckon motorcycle football was pretty dangerous. It's underwater wall of death. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, I, I suppose one of the most dangerous things to do is um, when you get, I, I forget what they call it now, jousting. And that's one thing I haven't done oh, on no. a motorcycle or on a horse because there's a person you don't know galloping full speed towards you. You don't know who he is. He's got a 14-foot pole. And boy, <laughs> he, he knocks you off your horse or motorbike. And so I've never done that because that also sounds to be to be bloody dangerous. <laughs> You're not kidding. The, you are also a, an acknowledged author. The, the childhood experiences, my wild youth in Gloucestershire, and That's then right. also close to the edge, which you wrote in conjunction with Jackie Decree, and that there's there's That's another right. book, isn't there? The, the whirling wheels and prancing hooves. Yes, of course. And uh, a lot of people didn't realise that I was an also an equestrian stunt man. Did everything you can possibly think of doing on and off a horse. So I thought uh, the title of my book must be something which indicates that. So that's why I called it Whirling Wheels and Planting Hooves. Oh, do you know, horses scare me. They really, really scare me. I ride a motorbike, but I wouldn't ride a horse. It's funny, isn't it? Well, of course, it's a, it's a living thing. Yeah. It's got its own mind. Exactly. It's got, it's got its own, there's, there's three controls on a car. A car, um, accelerator, clutch, and brake. <laughs> but there's a hundred controls on a horse just got to touch it the flank in a certain way and it it does something different oh dick it's been an absolute pleasure at long last i've been trying to talk to you for ages and i know you're extremely busy and you still are involved in in uh, you know the books and things like that 
do, do you still hanker after those days? Do you still hanker after getting down there and riding through the tunnel of fire? Um, yes, it's um, it's a fairly stupid thing to do, really, <laughs> because as soon as you went, as soon as you enter the tunnel of fire, uh, it's a blazing heat, and there's no oxygen, and of course the motorcycle, just like the rider, needs oxygen to keep going. So part way through the tunnel of fire, the engine stopped. So you had to very quickly uh, pull in the clutch to release the engine. Otherwise, you'd come to a halt in the worst possible place you could probably think of being, and that was in the middle of a tunnel of fire. Incredible, mate. Absolutely incredible. I've just got to say thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and catching up with you again. And I just hope things continue for you in in the same way. Well, the difficulty I've got at the moment is one of the things I do is guest speaking. And the problem is, of course, with lockdown, oh. the limited number of people that can be in one group is six. And, of course, that wouldn't be profitable. So I'm afraid I've been made redundant <laughs> in regard to guest speaking. Well, let's hope that comes back because I'll bet that's a fascinating evening to participate in. All right. right. Well, it's lovely to chat, and thank you for your interest. I really appreciate that. It's a pleasure, sir. Thank you for, um, as I say, giving us your time. I really do appreciate it. Take care, and uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Yes, and don't do any bungee jumping. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's never. Dangerous. That's dangerous. <laughs> I'll try not to ride my bike through a tunnel of fire either. Dick Shepherd, right. thank you for your time, and... Please take care. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for your interest. That's all right, mate. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.